In order to get a job in data analysis, your resume has to cause a manager to actually invite you to an interview. I know, crazy, right? But lucky for you, I got a data analysis job right out of college, and my team is currently going through the process of interviewing new employees, so I'm kind of familiar with the hiring process, at least how it relates to my company in terms of a data analysis team. Plus, I was able to get this job right out of college without any prior data analysis jobs, without a master's degree, and I didn't even go to an Ivy League school. I actually went to a pretty affordable state school. We are Penn State. Let's go. But by the end of this video, you'll know how to craft your resume around and structure the resume around the jobs you're applying for, highlight the most important parts of your experience and education, and avoid all the common mistakes that I see regularly with new grads who are looking for their first job in data. And these are the type of mistakes that get your resume thrown out before a manager even sees them. So you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. But first, let's go over resume structure. There's a few key points and key things that you need to have in your resume, and I will start by showing the resume that got me my job in the first place. So I'll quickly run through my resume. There's, I took out a lot of the personal information, but here at the top, you're gonna have your name, you're gonna have your phone number, any other relevant information, things like your email, your LinkedIn, if you have one, you probably should. Some recruiters look at that kind of stuff. And then also, especially for a data analysis job, it's a great idea to have a GitHub account this is where you can share projects that you've worked on, which is another relevant part that we're going to talk about in a little bit here. So if you have a GitHub account, definitely put that on there. You're also going to have your education and honors. The order of this isn't going to matter as much what you went to school for, what classes you took, your GPA, if you're proud of it. If not, I wouldn't include it. Relevant coursework, obviously relevant experience, any internships, any other jobs or any other experiences you've done in school that will help you show that you have some experience in the job you're applying for. All of the skills you've learned, whether through school or other jobs, and then any projects or leadership or personal interest. This is where you can put stuff that you've worked on outside of school or a job or any other hobbies or interests that might be applicable to the job that you're applying for. So that's the general structure of what your resume should have in it. But now what actually goes in each of these pieces? Because that's the most important thing. If you're just coming out of school or just about to graduate school, Probably the most relevant thing is going to be any of your experience you've had in school or your education and relevant coursework. So if we jump over to my education and honors section, you can see I graduated from Penn State University in the Eberly College of Science with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Statistics with a minor in Information Systems. I put my GPA because I was pretty proud of it and wasn't great, but it was pretty good. And then any of my relevant coursework. So for a data analysis job, things like probability, fitting regression models, risk management, especially since I work in health insurance, that's important. I have some background in insurance through my schooling, ANOVA testing, business analytics, some introductory um, coding classes in R and Python, and then also data science in R. Those are all relevant classes towards the jobs that I were applying that I was applying for. Specifically, this was a data analyst job in population health. Um, so a lot of these courses that I took were relevant to population health and what I would be doing on a day to day basis. Maybe I don't use all these on a day to day basis, but at least at the time, looking at the job description and all of the skills and requirements that they had, um, those are the things that we had on there. And if you did receive any honors, it might be a good idea to just put one line with any of the irrelevant things you had. Really, the most important thing is going to be your experience. So now if I jump over to this job posting, which is from the community food bank of the greater Cleveland area, here's some of the requirements for this job posting. They want a bachelor's degree from a four-year college or university or three to four years of related experience. So if you're about to graduate, you can use your four-year college or university degree and put that on there. That's going to be something that you can put right at the top because that's the first thing they're asking for in the qualifications. Next thing, if we remember looking at my resume, experience and or training in data analysis necessary. Well, I had a lot of experience in data analysis. It wasn't just my schooling, but we'll get to that in a minute. But just through my education and honor section, whoever was reading my resume, they saw that I had experience using R or Python to do a data analysis. I took a specific class in data science in R. My minor was in information systems, so I did a lot of like Excel work and a little bit of SQL training. So I had a lot of relevant coursework experience in data analysis. So that checks that box. Obviously, every job posting is probably going to have some like soft skills, like ability to work in a team. You don't need to highlight that on your resume, but if you have experience working in a team for a project, it might be just a good idea to reference that in your relevant experience or coursework. But if you don't, I think that's completely okay. The next thing this says is knowledge of data collection methods and analysis. 
Do you know how to pull data using SQL? Did you learn that in school? Definitely include that on your resume. It can be included in both your relevant coursework, it can be included in your skills, and it can be included in your experience if you have experience outside the classroom. So this is the kind of thing that I'm looking at when I'm applying to a job. I'm looking, okay, here's the experience they want, here's the relevant coursework that applies to that experience. All right, next. After your education and honors section, you should definitely have relevant experience, and if you don't, you definitely need to get it. So looking at my resume, here was some of the relevant experience I had at the time. First, I had a research position at school. If you're still in school, I think this is a great opportunity to get relevant experience outside of the classroom. Really, your education and honors section, that's kind of a given that you have some relevant experience through your schooling towards the job you're applying for. If you don't, other people will have a little bit of a leg up if you don't have relevant work experience outside of the classroom. But even if you do have relevant coursework, showing that you have real experience in an industry setting or with self projects rather than a school setting is really going to highlight your resume as somebody that they might be interested in interviewing. So first, I had a student researcher at Penn State. Well, if you're in school, like I said, try to get one of these research positions. It's a great way to do this. So you can see that I utilized Python to do various forms of data analysis, data cleaning, pulling in data, and a little bit of machine learning at the time. Also show that we set up processes to document how we did this for other people at the school who wanted to do similar research in the future. And then we also did some presentation on the analytics that we did. That's all relevant experience to be a data analyst. If we jump back over to the job posting, we can see they want people who have experience and or training in data analysis. I've used Python to pull data. I've used the various Python packages to visualize and present on that data that I found. I also showcase my outstanding communication skills to effectively work in an environment of highly diverse people. I had no manufacturing experience. This was a manufacturing research position and I was presenting findings to manufacturing folks, engineers, people who work on a shop floor. That's the kind of skills that you can showcase through your resume that apply specifically to a job posting like this. Next thing, knowledge of data collection methods and analysis necessary. I showcased that I knew how to pull data in something like Python. I've also showcased that I know how to visualize data and present on it in Python. Try to gain the relevant experience that applies directly to the job that you're applying for. I know this sounds kind of like common sense, but a lot of people just throw out a resume with their education on it and call it a day. You're not going to get a call back. You need to showcase that you've done these specific steps and learned these specific skills and performed these specific actions that actually apply to the job that you're applying for. The research position helped get me my internship. During that interview, I during that resume process, I had the exact same experience under my student research position that helped me get the analytics operations internship at the company that I work for now. They were impressed with my schooling and learning a lot about R while I was in school because I was a statistics major, and they needed help testing things like R uh, and a few other programs that they use within the company. They also were impressed with my experience with Python so I helped write automation scripts that cleaned up old files on the servers at this company. So again, I was using my resume and my experience to get experience to apply for a data analytics job. It's not just as simple as, okay, I did my schooling, now I get my job. Really, you have to put some work in during the process to try to gain that experience, that relevant experience towards the job postings that you're looking at. Also, a super important part is to take note of how I'm using action verbs in my relevant experience, testing, writing, converting, utilizing, presenting, preparing. These are the types of words you want to use in your resume that show that the actual actions that you took. Using words like analyzing or analyzed, developed, implemented. These are the types of words that stick out to somebody reading your resume. Say, okay, they actually analyze data related to a manufacturing process and then they presented on the results of that analysis. They utilized machine learning and data analytics in a manufacturing setting to improve smart manufacturing a process at their school. These are the type of words that let the person reading your resume know that you took specific actions. So keep that in mind. And also, if you're currently in school and you don't have this kind of relevant experience outside of the classroom, I have a ton of other videos on the channel talking about this exact process on how to get these types of experiences and how to do projects for yourself. So I'll link those in the description down below. All right, 
The next important component of your resume is going to be your skills section. Now this is an important distinction because this is the type of section that can get your resume thrown out before a manager even sees it. So what you're going to do here is go back to your job posting that you're interested in. Uh, we can see that this is the same data analyst job posting for the greater Cleveland area food bank. And here's some of the skills and requirements that they want for the person applying to the job. Data analysis, evaluation, collecting, cleaning, processing, documenting, and analyzing data. So keep those core skills in mind. Moving on, creating visualizations and communicating findings. Collect, clean, and process data from various internal and external sources. Analyzing trends, patterns, anomalies. Maintaining and updating dashboards. Creating data visualizations. Creation of reports using SQL queries. They're basically outlining the exact skills they want in a person applying to the job. So now if we jump back over to our resume and go to our skills section, let's look at how we're filled out with those specific requirements. You can see under data science and miscellaneous technologies, I include data analysis, statistics and modeling. I was a statistics major, so I had a lot of experience in regression, classification, and clustering. Those are specific requirements that they ask for. They want people who are able to analyze data and identify trends, patterns, and anomalies. Those are exactly the types of skills that they're looking for. They want people who can develop dashboards. I have dashboard development, both RShiny and Dash Plotly. The important thing here is that each of these bullet points that they're asking for a specific experience, those are the types of skills that you want to include on your resume. Now, obviously, if you don't have prior experience in something, don't put it because they are going to ask about it during an interview. But if you do, and you should, put, that, put those types of skills on your resume. And if you don't have something, try to do a self-project to help teach you that. Another important thing for the skills section is not to include a lot of information. Even this resume that I used back in the past, I would probably take some extra information out of this. Do they really care that I know some web development? Or do they really care that I know C++ or SAS? Probably not, because it's not a requirement for the job posting. So maybe I would just take those skills out because they're not relevant to the job that I'm applying for. Now finally, one of the last sections on your resume is going to be relevant projects or leadership positions that you've held. Some of the things that I had on my resume at the time was implementing SPC or statistical process control for my smart manufacturing research team. I took the lead on that part of the project. The other one is taking lead on an RShiny dashboard development in my internship. I helped convert an existing dashboard into an RShiny application. Another skill specifically that they're looking for is being able to build and convert and maintain dashboards. That's That project that I took on is specifically related to the job posting. These are the type of things you would want to include in a specific project section of your resume. This is where you're going to take relevant projects or areas of your work from your related experience, whether that be through school or whether that be for an internship or research position. Take relevant projects from those and specifically talk about exactly that as it applies to the job posting. Everything in the resume should be tailored exactly to what the job posting is looking for. And again, if you don't have relevant work experience, if you don't have an internship or a research position, this is a perfect area to highlight some self-projects that you've worked on. If you're looking through job postings and a lot of them are asking for SQL experience and you don't have a lot of SQL experience, do a project that works on pulling data using SQL. There's plenty of test data sets that you can use and find around the internet to be able to do this kind of thing. And then talk about your experience doing it as a self-project. If anything, doing a self-project might be more impressive to somebody reading your resume than just what you did in school. Because when you're going to school, you're going there to learn and you're forced to do it. But if you can show some initiative and show that you did something on your own, a self-project, that can be highly impressive to a to somebody that's reading your resume because it shows that you have some initiative in the area and that you're really actually interested in what the work that you're doing. The final important thing is to try to keep your resume and design and formatting. Keep it clean. Don't clutter it up too much. Jumping back to my resume, you can see, okay, it's pretty clean. There's a lot of information on it, but it's not like jumping around too much. It's super plain, easy to read formatting. I don't have like a bunch of colors and a bunch of highlighting and a bunch of pictures. Don't do that kind of thing. It's just distracting. Really, you just want clearly labeled sections that highlight the areas of your experience, coursework, and other jobs that you might have had that apply directly to the job. So at this point, you should have a resume that's tailored specifically to the jobs that you're applying for. So great luck to everybody applying for jobs. And let me know down in the comments if you've been able to get a job using some of the techniques that you learned in this video. Thanks for watching.